So we're going to look at stuff on Legendary, just because it gives you a better idea of the stats. The Heroic is just going to be lower versions. So we're going to look at the stuff on Legendary, because it's kind of more exciting. So we've got Legendary Accessories and Quest Weapons, Legendary Set Items, Raid Loot and Sentient Artifacts, Crafted Weapons Suite, Crafting Stuff, and Plat. So what do we start with first? What's, what's the thing to go to? Set Items? Somebody asked about the Set Items. Let's go with Set Items. So somebody asked about the Range Set. All right. So, to start, we have the legendary Arc Steel Brim. So this is Spell Focus Mastery 7, in Will 17, Insightful Magical Sheltering 26, Magical Sheltering 54. Wow, so this gives a lot of magical sheltering. That's sweet. Um, and the set item, Arc Steel Battle Mage, it's a three piece set. 50 artifact spell power to electric, fire force, and repair, so artificer stuff. 10% artifact bonus to crit for artificer stuff. Plus four intelligence and charisma, and plus four to spell DCs. Not bad. This is a really good item. I like that a lot. Then you have the Attunement Gloves. This is also for the Arcsteel Battle Mage. So I guess it's hat and glove slot. Um, Magnetism. Lots. Lightning Lore. Evocation Focus 9. Quick Draw. And then you have the same set bonus. The Hallowed Trail. Which is... Oh, for something else. This is the Flame Cleansed Fury. I wonder if there's a um, way to break this up. Look at all these items. There's a way to break this up. Anyway, uh, Hallowed Trail. This is for the Flame Cleansed Fury set. So this is essentially fire, force, light, and positive spell powers. It's the same. It's the same type of set, but it's Wisdom and Charisma, same spell DCs, and it's fire, force, light, and positive spell power. So essentially, this would be if you're playing as any of those types of casters: Druid, Favored Soul, Fire Sorcerer is a good option. It gives Evocation Focus nine on a cloak, Quality Spell Pen. Radiance and Radiance Lord. It's not bad. It's kind of cool. This dictates new OP builds. No, not necessarily. Um, depends on if the items are better or worse or how they fit into builds exi that are existing. But the legendary Hammer Fist. This is part of the Part of the Family set, which I'm assuming is a melee set, which gives artifact to double strike, artifact to melee power, and artifact damage versus helpless. Wow. Isn't that everything you want? Look at this. Look at this stupid set that I have. Ravenloft. A double strike, sneak attack die, fortification pen, and... Damage versus Helpless. I'll definitely take 50, 25 melee power versus damage against Helpless. Thank you. This gives Double Strike, uh, Diversion, Seeker, and Insightful Deadly. Pretty good. That's a pretty good set item. I like that. Forge Maker's Fingers. This is the last of the Archmeal Steel Battle Mage. I guess there's this Arch Steel Battle Mage, or there's the Attunement Gauntlets. Um, the Attunement Gauntlets is... The difference between the two, they're basically the same. The Attunement Gauntlet is Magnetism and Lightning Lore. This is Reconstruction and Repair Lore. So if you want to go with Repair instead. Standard issue faceplate. I don't like the fact that this is going down here, but whatever, that's fine. Standard issue faceplate. It's got uh, insight, so aggro, intimidate, insightful physical sheltering, and natural armor. Cool. It has the legendary Guardian of the Gate set. 10% armor class, 30 artifact physical resistance rating, a 75% threat generation. Not bad. That's pretty good. Uh, Sunstone gauntlets, part of, oh my god, so many different sets. There's a lot of set bonuses, guys. Get ready for the sets. <laughs> um, the next set bonus, it is... The um, Hruit's Influence. So we've got uh, Spell DCs, Wisdom, and Charisma. And then Fire, Cold, Lightning, and Positive. So this looks like the Druid set, sort of, because it's Fire and Cold and Lightning. Um, spell Power and Crit, as well as Wisdom, Charisma, which is kind of neat. I like the fact that it's Wisdom and Charisma. It's pretty cool. And it's uh, Gloves. Inside Physical Shelter, Devotion, Healing, Lower Wizardry. Not bad. Legendary Wall Watch Circlet, uh, which is the Wall Watch. Artifact bonus to range power. Artifact bonus to double shot. 20% double shots. Really good, man. Holy moly. Uh, hey, what's going? What's going on? Uh, artifact bonus to fortification bypass. Super good. And sneak attack die. So, again, amazing range set. 20% artifact double strike is kind of good. Because um, it stacks with all sorts of stuff. So, yeah, you're looking at that. We've got 10 and slice. Uh, 10 and slice 17, which I'm assuming it just means 17 seconds. That's kind of a weird number. Accuracy 33. Woo! 33 to hit. The best is 28 right now. 33 is much better. Reflex and double shot. It's kind of good. Legendary Wild with Gauntlets. So this is again for the Wall Watch set. Dodge, armor, diversion, displacement. Lesser displacement is really nice and evasion. So just, just put it in perspective. This gives you 25% mischance and 21% dodge. In one single item. This is such a defensive bonus. And it gives armor class and distant diversion. Wow. That is so, that's so nice. We're going to keep looking at accessories before we hit up armor first. We'll look at armor in a sec. Uh, then we have the legendary Aetherband. This is a uh, bracelet. 
for the Esoteric Initiate. Oh my god, too many things. Um, Esoteric Initiate is Artifact Bonus to Spell DCs. MRR Cap, Artifact Bonus to Intelligence, Wisdom, and Charisma, so anyone can use it. As well as uh, Universal Spell Power, so it's not specific, which is awesome. So we've got Insightful Spell Pen 5, which is better than the 4. Uh, magical Efficiency, which you need. Mystic Diversion, which you don't need because Spellcasters don't do as much damage as Melees, so it doesn't matter. And Shield Bonus, which is kind of cool. Um, a lot of Spellcasters actually use Shields nowadays, so maybe if this changes up, the Shield Bonus, like for example, most Spellcasters are going to use like Giant's Platter because of how good it is, so you don't really get the Shield Bonus, but uh, this could be good. Let's see. Legendary Dusk Lenses, part of the Esoteric Influence, so it looks like it's Bracers and uh, Eyeballs. Potency, Insightful Potency, Efficient, empower, efficient, maximize. Wow. This looks like an item. This is your new pansophic circlet. Bow down before the pansophic eyeglasses. Legendary found me recruit sigil. Quips in the neck. Lead any item that makes people not use my gorgeous new art. I mean, I will say, I like a lot of the, 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 the images of a lot of the stuff. It looks very, very cool. I'll have to look at the cloak. So let's take a look at the cloak. We'll look at all these items in a bit. I can't look at the docents. But yeah, the Family Recruit Sigil, it is part of the Part of the Family set, so the Melee set. Relentless Fury, Deadly Armor Piercing, True Seeing. Wow, that's amazing. Holy shit, good necklace. Uh, Hallowed Castigators, this is Devotion Healing Lore, Insightful Sheltering, and Empower Healing? And it's part of the other set? This is going to be really hard to parse. This is part of the uh, Flame Cleanse Fury, so like I'm assuming uh, Favored Soul Cleric sort of set. Very, very powerful. MS Paint, oh sweet. The white bracers? Yeah, you just change them up. It's the, it's these ones right here, but you just MS paint the shit out of them. Uh, Legendary Pendant of the Azure Sea and the Azure Sky. So they're both part of the Heroic's Influence, I'm assuming. Yeah, they're both Heroic's Influence. You just choose one. Um, her, the Azure, Azure Sky? Yeah, the Azure Sky is Combustion, Fire Spell Power, and Sky Attunement. So while a Fire Elemental, you gain bonuses to Fire Castle, Fire Spell Power, and Fire Crit. I kind of wish this would actually have numbers in it, but it doesn't. And then the Azure Sea which is not updating. Azure Sea is the same thing, but cold. So very, very good. Um, so the important thing about this is this is... Um, uh, it just says Water Elemental. So this is not specific to Druid, which means if you have to be playing as a Sorcerer, because Heruit's Influence actually gives Charisma as well, you can use this on your Charisma uh, Sorcerer build as Fire and Cold Sorcerer, which is really, really powerful. Guess what? Sorcerers are gonna, definitely going to be very good. Um, and then we have the Legendary Standard Issue Risk Guards, which are part of the Guardian of the Gate set, and they are Magic Sheltering, Protection, Spell Saves, Parrying. Yeah, these are pretty standard issue risk cards. I would wear these. Holy moly. All right, so now we've got armor. We're going to look at the armor next. We skip those. We have the Blessed Bulwark, Heavy Armor. Uh, this is part of the Flamekin's Fury. So this is the uh, Cleric set, Heavy Armor. Remember, fortif um, not Fortification. Uh, favorite Souls can't use Heavy Armor. Physical Sheltering, Healing Amp, False Life, Fortification, and this. Seems good. It's got healing and physical sheltering. It's got 81 life on it. It's gonna be nice. Blessed vestments, medium armor. Hey, check it out. It's the exact same stats, but on medium armor. Cool. And false life. I'm gonna buy these so I can take a look at them. Legendary bronze dragon plate. Druid's influence. It's blue dragon scale, so it can be used by druids if they want to use heavy armor. And hey, it's the same stats, but it's for the uh, druid set. Let's take a look at that. The legendary enforcer's coat. Hey, look. It's the same stats. False life, healing amp, physical sheltering. But it's part of the part of the family set. Let's take a look at that. Enforcer plate. Uh, hey, look, it's heavy armor, but part of the part of the family set, which means, hey, guess what? If you happen to want to use heavy armor plate, you don't have to play Warforged anymore to do damage. You can just equip this one, which is kind of cool. Um, my my characters, I have to play Warforged so I can get the access to the, the good set, so this is awesome. Making new material type is like a week of work, so I had to make it blue dragon scale. Oh, apparently. Um, so that's kind of cool. So I'm going to buy this. Enigma Core. Hey, this is part of the Esoteric Influence set, so it's the caster set. And hey, it's almost identical to the other one, except it gives Repair Amp instead of Healing Amp. Very cool. We have the Iron Heart, which is part of the Tank set, which gives Repair Amp. We have the Order's Garb, which is Clothing, which has no set on it whatsoever. It gives one Physical Sheltering, which is hilarious. And then it gives 15% exceptional spell lore. So you would have to consider whether you want to use this or not, because 15% exceptional spell lore is amazing, and it's very hard to get on other items. 
because uh, the uh, understand that the crit, let's say on stuff like the not the enforcer's coat, I picked the exact wrong item. The blessed vestments here, that crit is artifact bonus to crit chance, which stacks with the exceptional, which means you will be starting to see people with 100% spell crit chance now that this expansion has come through. We have the plasma core, which is the arc steel set. Um, same stats, it's just repair. I'm assuming all the stats are going to be the same on these things. We have the turncoat, which is just clothing and part of the part of the family set. So it looks like the part of the family set is going to have um, light or no armor and heavy armor and medium armor. I, I wonder if it has light armor. Um, Umbral Soul, which is part of the part of the family set. Hey, look at that. Kind of cool. Docent. The plate is there's plate for the heavy armor set. Legendary wild card for part of the family. So part of the family, the melee DPS set, has every single armor type. Cloth, light, medium, heavy, and docent, no matter what you're playing. That's kind of cool. Wild Heart, which is here, which didn't update. Come on. Load. Wild Heart Docent is part of the uh, Wall Watch. Oh, man. Check it out. If you want to play a ranged Warforged, you can do it now. Because you get the set bonus on the Wild Heart. Sweet. Why did I put that on there? The Wildwood Outfit is, again, Wall Watch with the clothing. Let's take a look at that. Legendary Wildwood Vest, which is, same thing, light armor with the range set. And the Legendary Mark... Or is the Arcsteel Battle Mage medium armor set. So if you're playing as an artificer or whatever and you want to use the set, but you don't want to use or don't want to play as a um a Warforged, still works. Conveniently, uh, this item is medium armor, which means it actually works with Eldritch Knight as well if you want to play as an Arcsteel Eldritch Knight. Also interesting is that this medium armor gives repair amp, presumably because it's designed to be used by Warforged. Did I buy two of these? Did I buy two of these? No, I didn't. Bye. Okay, now we're gonna quickly take a look at these items so you guys can get a get a bit of a bit of a fashion show going on over here. Um, so to start, I'm just gonna get rid of this. I don't need this. Get out of here. Uh, so to start, we're gonna look at the bronze dragon scale. It's gonna be kind of cool. Ooh, bronze dragon scale. It's literally bronze dragon scale. Very cool. Except it doesn't shine as nice as the awesome silver dragon scale that I got for paying a bunch of money. Still kind of cool. Legendary Mark IV. Oh, baby! Let me turn this cloak off. Oh, yeah. Look at that glow. I love that glow, man. The glow that's coming out of the, the armor bit. There's like a glow under the shoulders. Look how cool that is! Woo! That is what I want. What I want, very specifically, is something that I want for Dungeons Dragons Online for a while is to have cool cosmetics. If you buy a lot of the cosmetics of the store, they look like, okay, they look whatever. You don't stand out from the crowd, you just have like a different looking thing, and there's no way to distinguish that I got this thing out of the store. But could you imagine if all the outfits out of the store had cool flashy little things like this? Little frills, colored things that light up, so when you're running around you've got these cool effects? I think that would be fantastic. I want to see some of that stuff in the store. Very cool looking armor. I like it. Let's check out the Blessed Bulwark. Heavy armor. Ooh, it's, I like the, the design. Man, this does, this feels, I love this armor set. Oh my god. This is so nice looking. I like the detail. I like the the, the plates. I also like how they kind of like, the, the plates are all individually moving, which is very cool. I really like that. I haven't checked out this cloak. How does this cloak look? This cloak. Uh, This cloak. Are you kidding? It uses the same one as this? Oh no, it's different. Oh man, I hate it. Anyway, let's not look at the cloak. How much AC so does it give? I don't know, 48? I'm assuming it just gives more AC. And we're made of human skins. Now we're going to look at the blessed, legendary blessed vestments. So if you happen to be the favored soul version. Oh, it's got that gold! It's got that gold glow! Look at that! Oh, -ho! look at the gold glow! That is so cool! Oh my god. Ah, that gold effect. I love it. Okay, so now you're looking at the Wildwood Vest. See what that looks like? This is the uh, Ranger set. Oh. oh, it's a suit with the sleeve. It's a, just a suit with a vest and the sleeves rolled up. That is sick. Oh, man, it's so cool. I kind of love it. Then we've got the Turncoat, which is the part of the family set as well. 
The turncoat... Hey, it's the same thing, but it's just a different styled vest. Also, apparently, I don't have pants on. So, I, I don't know if it does it didn't animate the pants, but no pants. It, it's literally just... I guess it's called the turncoat. It's only a jacket. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, Wildwood outfit. Same, same art, no pants. And the Order's garb. Woo! Look at this armor! Look how pretty this is! Wow. That is gorgeous to look at. Holy smokes. I love this robe. This is so cool. Big fan. Alright. Legendary Wash Captain's plate mail. Let's go. I love the no pants. That's kind of funny. This is the same, but silver. Oh, man. It's actually it's kind of black with that gold. I like the black with gold. This is very cool. I really like this plate. This one's real nice. Legendary Enforcer's plate. Someone's going to need to put all these things on the wiki or something. There should be like a cosmetic tab where you can like browse stuff in game. That would be sick. The next plate that you can get is the uh, Legendary Enforcer's plate. And look at that. It's got that brass. I kind of like it. I like the brass look. That's cool. Now we have the Enforcer's coat. And then lastly, we have the Legendary Wild Card. I think the Wild Card... Uh, I think I know what the wild card is going to look like. Whoa! Ooh! Look at this! Look at that red! Woo! I, I like this one. I like that it's got the coat and then it's got like some of the plate underneath. Wow, this might be my favorite looking p item here. I love the detail. That's awesome. Alright, last item. Legendary wild card. And then we're going to be selling all this garbage and heading into looking at the next set of items. And of course it looks like that. That's what I figured. I'm going to put my mislaid investment back on. Actually, no, I'm going to, I'm going to wear the Enforcer's vest. It's Spearcraft leather, so I can wear it. I got, I got to look good, man. I got to look good. There's also Jekyll Maxon, which I like. I, didn't, I, don't, I don't know if that's an actual person, but that's a hilarious name. And to all sell. Get out of here. All right. Next set of stuff. Alright, so we looked at the set items. Let's look at the legendary accessories and weapons, please. Oh, God. Alright, so an inexplicably legendary garbage can lid? Question mark? It's a 3 times a D8 plus 15, so automatically this is a write-off. You can't use this as a uh, vanguard weapon. It has impact, bludgeoning, shield bashing, and exceptional heal damp. Well, that's bad. So, I don't know who this weapon is designed for. I think it's supposed to be designed for a vanguard. Um, like, it's not for a bard. If it was a bard, you could use it just for free and get the free offhand attacks. Um, if it was a buckler, but it's a small shield. And since it's only a D8, you don't want to actually use this. Uh, current vanguard weapons, if you don't know, do 3 D10s. Um, plus, plus, it's like 3 D10s plus 10. Or 3 D10s plus 15. So, um, yeah, this doesn't work. So, I'm sorry, garbage can lid. All right, let's put that on the list. Crystalline Ward. Um, large Shield, it's a D10. Doesn't have, again, doesn't have the damage. Like, they both, they have the expanded crit profile, which is nice, but they don't have the damage. So, again, bad Vanguard weapons. Um, it's got Mental Shielding. Ward you against spells like Charm and Domination. That's kind of cool. Potency, Encyclical Magic Resulting, Quality Magical Sheltering. Now, this is an interesting shield. Because there's a lot of different options, directions you could go with it. You could, um, you could... Potentially use this on like a spellcaster. You could potentially use this on like a tank build to pick up potency somewhere. It's because it's got that magical sheltering. It's a very interesting item. We're gonna take a look at that. We have the legendary moon guard. Legendary moon guard. It's got guard breaking, core skating, so it does light damage on hit, and then the sheltering. Again, I find it weird. Um, the core skating is strange. I don't know why it's on this item because again, you don't attack with a shield because it is only a base D6 damage, so it's very very bad. But it probably looks good. Let's take a look. Legendary resplendent fury orb. It's got nearly finished, so you can craft onto this. Um, I don't have a list of all the stuff that you can craft onto. Let me see if I can find a list of all the stuff that you can craft onto it. Because um, if I can find that list, then I can talk about the items in full detail. I think there is a list here. One second, pull it up. Lamania. Uh, named loot. Shield. Ooh, where's the shield? Shields, orbs, there we go. So on the Resplendent Fury, you can craft Insightful, Intelligence, Charisma, or Wisdom, which is kind of cool. 
Insightful Radiance, Insightful Radiance Lore. Oh, Insightful Radiance Lore? And when you cast a Fire Light spell, you gain 50 temporary spell points that last 30 seconds. You can only trigger once. So this item, if you're playing as a light caster, just get it. It's amazing. It's one of the greatest things ever. Legendary Rising Sun, Tower Shield. Um, it absorbs light damage, which is kind of cool, and it does a D12, which is weird. Um, again, can't be used as a Vanguard, but uh, yeah, so it's got some cool defensive stats. I don't think you would use this. You might. If there's a lot of light damage you need to absorb, you might use this, but I think you'd still probably use the uh, Crystalline Ward. Then we have the Stygian Wrath. Uh, Stygian Wrath also has one of these nearly finished things where you can craft onto it. So this is, you know, negative lore and stuff and neg nullification. This nearly finished allows you to craft insightful intelligence, wisdom, or charisma, depending on which one you want. You wouldn't really want the charisma on this, but yeah. Legendary Creeping Dust Conduit. Next weapon. Quarter Staff. Got Creeping Dust Lore, so Cold and Lightning Spells. Power of Creeping Dust, Cold and Lightning. Which is, I find really weird that it's called Creeping Dust. Before this was called Storm. And now it's called Creeping Dust, which is interesting. Conjuration, Evocation Focus. Arcane Augmentation increases the cast level of casting your spells by two. Sorcerer and Wizard Spells. Quality Fell Spell Focus Mastery 2. This is a very interesting item. It's got a lot of stats on it. Don't know how good it is. And then you have Firestorm, which I'm assuming is... Uh, Firestorm Lore gives Cold and Lightning. Cold and Lightning. So I don't think Firestorm was supposed to do Cold and Lightning. I think Firestorm was supposed to do something else. But it currently does Cold and Lightning. That's interesting. Legendary Flicker of the Crescent Moon. Um, you've got a Sickle, which is interesting. It is Keen. It's got Bleeding. It's got Chilling. It's got Insightful Deception. Would you use this? No, you wouldn't. But it's the best Sickle you can get. So, probably good. Legendary Lunar Crescent. Sovereign Vorpal. Ooh. Times three. Wait, this is a Kopesh? Wait a second. Hold the phone. That's not a Kopesh. But anyway. Holy Aligned Silver. This is just a good Kopesh. You're probably going to want to pick up one of these. Um, it's just useful to have around. It's similar to a Morning Lord's. I think it's not better. The Aligned makes it really nice. I don't think this one's better. It's got Sovereign Vorpal on it, which gives you a little bit of base damage. So I think between this and the Morning Lord's Kopesh, they kind of go back and forth as to which one you would use. Moonbeam, Quarterstaff, Impact, Holy, Double Strike, Felling Oak. Uh, the Felling Oak effect is kind of cool. Double Strike, presumably, you can get from other items, so you don't really need it on this stat. So would you use this weapon? Probably not, but it's going to look cool, so you might want to cos cosmetic it. Uh, Legendary Moon Slice, Solid from Vorpal, Chilling and Negative, and Quality Deception. Again, cool and interesting item. Would you want to use it? Yeah. Might be like an offhand, assuming there's no set dagger. Legendary Moon Willow. Keen, Vorpal, Holy, and Silver. It just falls in the same category as all these other weapons. They, they are they have a potential for use, but they're not really better or worse than Morning Lord weapons. So, uh, Nightshade Shooter. Hey, a light crossbow. Vorpal, Poisonous, Nightshade, Venom, Wounding. Um, DC twenty two fortitude save on a level twenty nine item. If that is correct, then the Nightshade Venom you just don't you just write it off. The Wounding is actually surprisingly good because you fire twice um, as a uh, Inquisitive. So you're actually doing 10 constitution damage a hit, and that's a lot of damage. So this is a very good crossbow. Highly recommend. We have the legendary Platinum Knuckles. Now this is an actually very cool item. So number one, transmuted platinum. So there's a chance to turn guys into platinum with a DC 70. This is not high enough for level 29. It's got impact. It's got bone splitter. So when you roll a 20, which is converted as critical, the weapon breaks the target's bones of the target's body. Creatures with skeletons take 40 d6s of damage and will have their attack speed slowed and their attack damage reduced. That is crazy powerful. This item is insanely good. Look at that. Look how powerful this is. It's so good. Um, it's got Seeker. It's got Double Strike. It's spiked. Wow. So powerful. Um, does this block slots? Does it? I don't know if it does. It doesn't say it anywhere on here. Uh... Yeah, we'll save it in the flavor specs. Okay, so one of the things that's interesting about these gloves, the legendary platinum knuckles, is that all these amazing stats, this bone splitter thing is ridiculous how powerful it is. 25% slow? Whoa. 25% reduced damage? Whoa. Um, big problem. This also, and, and it's part of the family set, so if you're playing a monk, but it precludes gloves. So you can't wear gloves while you have these hand reps on, because they're, they're like, you know, brass knuckles. It's kind of cool. Ooh, Legendary Rumbling Thunder. It's a great crossbow with reverberating, Joe Pleading, Solvern Vorpal, and Adamantine. Is this good? It's a great crossbow, and there aren't many in the game, so it's usable. Definitely good enough. 
Legendary Sun Crusher. It's got Sovereign Smiting and it's aligned and it's coarse getting and fiery. This is probably one of the best Morning Stars in the game. So highly recommend. If you're not using a set Morning Star, you're going to be using one of these. Um, Sun Slice. Coarse Gating and Fiery. Coarse Gating is just too good because almost nothing is resistant to um, light damage. It's got Sovereign Banishing, which is kind of weird. And Insightful Deception 8. This is very, very powerful. Insightful Deception 8 gives you plus 8 to hit um, when you've got Sneak Attack. So decently good. Might be considered holding if you don't have any other Insightful Deception. Legendary Thundershot. Boom, boom, boom. Blunted Ammunition. The cool thing about Blunted Ammunition, if you didn't know, if a weapon has Blunted Ammunition like this, it actually qualifies for the extra threat range from Pulverizer out of Legendary Dreadnought. So, if you have Pulverizer and you use this, you get extra crits all the time. So, very good. Highly recommend. Legendary Twisted Willow. Bow. This has Elasticity, so it's got plus one crit multi on a 19 or 20. Armor Piercing. Could be good. Depends on whether how hard it is to get Armor Piercing. I don't think Elasticity is big enough to make this the best bow, but I don't think it's better than Void, but it could be. Black Satin Waste. Nearly finished. i got to go to belts now. Do, do, do. See what the nearly finished effect is. Belts. Black Satin Waste. So you can get quality, intelligence, wisdom, or charisma. Spell pen, spell focus, quality spell focus, mastery, and siphon will. Great belt. 10 to 10. Oh, if you, if any item that does bludgeoning damage, if you have Pulverizer, the enhancement out of Legendary Dreadnought that increases your critical threat range while you're using a bludgeoning weapon, it increases the critical threat range of that weapon. So Legendary Thundershot does bludgeoning damage, therefore Pulverizer increases the threat range by one. Even though it's not a bludgeoning weapon because it's a crossbow, because it has bludgeoning in the text, it does do that. Same thing with the um, Repeating Snowball build. If you happen to have this Legendary Snowball, which is totally useless now thanks to expanded damage, um, but if you have the Legendary Snowball, it's a bludgeoning weapon, even though it's a dart, so it does get benefit from Pulverizer, which is kind of neat. Um, Black Satin Belt, very good. Um, not hard to determine if you'd actually use it. Black Velvet Capelette. It has greater boon of undeath, so when you take damage, you get healed. Quality Intelligence, Profane Well-Rounded, and Insightful Negative Healing Amp. Hey, guess what? It's the negative item for negative users, because there's... There's gotta be somebody who plays Pale Master. There's somebody who plays Pale Master at level 30. And for them, they get this item. Legendary Bronze Dragon Scale Belt, Con 21, Healing Amp, Intellectual False Life, Life Sealed. This item is fantastic, and it's great because if you're playing as a Warforged, say you're playing as like a Warforged tank, and you use Healing Amplification, all the docents give Repair Amp. This gives Healing Amplification and Insightful False Life, and you're already going to have False Life on your gear, so this is really good synergy. Plus it's got Constitution, Life Sealed, this is fantastic. It's just absolutely amazing. Yes, there are quivers that give you bludgeoning damage. If you use those, it automatically qualifies for Pulverizer. That's why you've seen people take the shift over to Legendary Dreadnought recently for their ranged builds, as opposed to just being in Fury. Oh, I forgot to buy this cloak. Do I have the cloak on the list? Yes. A cloak of the city's champion. Extra smites, and they smite regenerate faster. What if your smites don't regenerate? What happens then? If your smites don't regenerate, do you still regenerate smites? Parrying 10. Insightful Constitution 10. Quality physical sheltering. Yeah, because that's a great question. <laughs> that's okay. I'm just yelling at this camera. Um, Glittering Waste Wrap. Charisma. Bluff. Anthem. Anthem Melody Bulwark. While your Anthem is three or above, your Inspire Greatness grants you and your allies additional three PRR. This is kind of cool. Anthem Melody. The idea that the more Anthem effects you have on your bard, because they're all over the place, um, you can get different effects. So you saw this present in... Um, what is that item? Is the item from the raid, Killing Time, that does the Anthem effect that gives you extra crit uh, allied charm that gives you extra crit and stuff. Very good. You should fix that. Oh, good. Well, anyway, it should work. So there you go. Cool item. Um, if you don't have charisma anywhere else, this is kind of cool. Only for buff bards, basically. Shadow Sprinters. Speed. Hide. Move silently. Insightful. Nimble skills. Wow, this item is 33 to your hide. Really good with sign of the ethereal plane, and it gives move speed. If you don't have boots, great boots. Stone shoes. Sink like a brick. These boots are made of concrete. You sink in water. Well, we're buying that and testing that on stream. Underwater action zero. You have a competence, plus zero competence bonus to swim and can breathe underwater. Why is it plus zero competence? Anyway, Stormguard Prison. DC 17. Yeah, DC 17. Hell yeah, that should be fixed. Um, Stone Shoes are going to turn to an acid spell part of thing. Weighty assets. You benefit from increasing unconscious rage and parrying. Wait, does this, does this sink you though? Does that work? I gotta test that out. Legendary Umber Brim. Improved Crawling Strikes. Accuracy. Insightful Deception. Profane Well-Rounded. Oh! Look at that! Anybody. Anybody can just take this 
and now you can get accuracy. You don't have to make slave lords anymore to get accuracy. This is anybody can use this. And it gives insightful defe it's a deception, which is an extra plus 8 to hit when you don't have aggro. This is plus 41 to hit. 42 if you can't profane while rounded. Wow, how good is that? Accuracy. My god. Legendary Arc Ricochet. Shuriken. Um, it's blunted. <laughs> so you don't even need the quiver. Um, jolting. Reverberating. Superior Vorpal. I'm sure a Shuriken guy's going to use that. Spicy will tell me if he's going to use it. Is this good? Spicy? Good or bad? You tell me. Um, yeah. Sonic damage. Lightning damage. Blah, blah, blah. All right. Celestial Amethyst Ring. So it's, uh, i got to go down to the rings. Rings. Celestial Amethyst Ring. So this one, you can get intelligence, dex, or con on it. It gives greater auto repair. So it gives you chance to cast reconstruct. Holy crap. Bonuses to thing. And you regenerate repair healing and repair. Wow, this is so cool. It's a repair item for Warforged. Oh my god, someone made one for Warforged. This is amazing. Here you go. Here's your item. You can take a look at that. A Warforged item. Wow. Well, anyway, the, it works on this, so it should be good enough. Oh my god, it's the thing where you get healed when you're at negative health, but it's repair. Oh my god, that's so cool. Oh man, that was so cool. Celestial Emerald Ring. So the Emerald Ring, it's got Insightful Insight, Insightful Intimidate, cooldowns, and you can also craft uh, Emerald, Strength, Wisdom, or Constitution. So it's a tank item. Cool tank item. Extra threat, extra aggro. Celestial Ruby Ring. You can notice the Celestial Rings. This is another accuracy item! Oh, there's two accuracy items in one expansion! Oh, actually there's three! Oh my god, I'm so excited! We haven't had an accuracy item in like a year or two years. Oh, this is so good! Okay, sorry, I'm losing my mind. Uh, you can craft onto this, this accuracy item, the Celestial Ruby, can get Strength, Dex, or Intelligence, which is the majority of classes that are going to be hitting. Um, if you are a Charisma, Wisdom, or Constitution hitter, lol, Constitution hitter, um, you can use one of the other items. This is kind of cool. It's got Stunning, it's got Insightful Physical Sheltering. This is just a fantastic item. I don't know anyone who wouldn't use this if they're a melee, because every melee's got Dire Charge. Wow. Okay, Celestial Sapphire Ring. Improved Deception. Uh, profane Well-Rounded, so it's got the Improved Session effect, and on the Sapphire rating it's Intelligence, Charisma, no, Sapphire? Yeah, Intelligence, Charisma, or Strength. No. Oop. Oh, thank you, Apple. I needed that. I needed that. Uh, wait. Why is this called the Sapphire Ring? Is that the wrong name? Nope. I think the names are wrong. So this, on, on the preview, it's called the Amethyst Ring, but this is right here is the Sapphire Ring, and the Amethyst Ring over here, on the preview notes, is called the Sapphire Ring. So the names got swept up. But anyway, this Celestial Ring is supposed to have Improved Deception, Profane Well-Rounded, and Dodge 21. Well, it's supposed to have Dodge 21. And you can also craft Intelligence, Dex, and Con on it, which is pretty cool. Then we have the Topaz Ring. Parrying 10, Wizardry 440, Lesser Displacement, wow. And you can craft on this one, this is the Topaz. Wizard, wizard, Wisdom, Intelligence, or Charisma. Very powerful. Wizardry is hard to come by, and I like the fact that it's on an item. Collective Sight. Uh, no, not Insightful. They're all just regular stats. But they go up to 21. Then we have Collective Sight, which has another crafter. Craftable. Collective Sight. So this has nearly finished and almost there. It's got Quality Resistance. So quality resistance 4, plus 4 to all saves, and quality bonus to the magical resistance rating per religious lore feat. Oh, oh by the way, this is called Collective Sight because this was designed by the Dungeons & Dragons Online community. If you voted on the thing on the forum post, um, you can get that. It's kind of cool. So this is neat. Um, but yeah, so it's got two stats. You've nearly finished, where you can craft whatever main stat you want. So strength, dex, con, int, wisdom, or charisma. And almost there, you can craft insightful Strength, Dex, Con, Intelligence, Wisdom, or Charisma. So you can make it Strength, Insightful Strength, Quality Resistance, and plus one to Quality Bonus, Magical Resistance rating per Religious Lore feat you have. Holy smokes, this item is good. This is a good item. By the way, this item? It's good. It's very powerful. I like it. Um, man, wow. Wow, wow, wow. You need all your stats in one item. That's amazing. Uh... 
This is the Conduit of Soul. It's a necklace. Divine Augmentation plus two cash level of Divine Spells. Um, cash level is in a weird place because most... Everything... The max cash level on most spells is 15. And most people get to level 20. So max cash level doesn't really work. Or cash level doesn't really work. Um, so you, uh, on almost every single one where it says cash level, just write this off right away if you're playing at level 30. Um, especially because if you're playing as a spell casting Destiny, you get even more. I think the only classes class that can actually use it is Sorcerer. And again, even then, they, they without any items, they're hitting like 32 cash level. So... You don't really care about the Dawn augmentation. But it's got wizardry, healing, lore, and quality devotion. Pretty cool. Moonrise Bracers. Um, balanced Key Strike. When you activate Light, 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 or Dark, 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 you benefit from increased melee power for a short time. Ugh. Monk buff. What is this? Light, 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 or Dark, 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 you get a increase in melee power? How much? Wow. That's amazing. I can't test it. Enhanced key, plus three key. Wow. Connect greater reinforced fists. Bam. Concentration. Wow. Hey, if you play monk, you have to use this item. This is cool. Think about your bracer slot. Shattered Onyx, another ring. And it is, hey, it's the negative healing amp thing. So congratulations, this is your negative healing thing. Then we also have legendary breaking the bank, the rune arm, which has, why is this so small? Why is this window so small? What? Somebody, somebody made my window small. Anyway, break in the bank. Firing a slow glob of molten gold at your enemies that sticks to your foes on the ground. At, at higher charges, additional enemies can be struck. So it's got the money shot. I don't know what type of damage it does. It just says damage. It, and it does additional fire. It has no stats on it, which I think is wrong. There's a rune arm in here. Shields. Rune arms, rune arms, rune arms, rune arms. Rune Arms. So Breaking the Bank is also supposed to do Potency 154, Charisma Skills, Fire Spell Power 214, and Fear Immunity. Whereas now we have over here the Legendary Dumpster Fire, which has Ghost Shot on it, which is the one there. It has nothing on it, and it's supposed to have Quick Firing. I don't know what that does. Fire Spell Power, Fire Lore, and Shield Bonus to AC. Very cool. So we're going to take a look at all these items, see how they look. Uh, oh yeah, I bought these boots. Okay, so just to start, we're gonna go over to somewhere where there's nice, light, lots of light. We get the boat. Bow. Woo! Look at that. That is a nice looking bow. Oh, look at this bow. That is beautiful. That is the lo twisted willow. Next, we got the Stygian wrath. Are you kidding, dude? Look at this orb. Ho ho ho! That is amazing. Okay. Wow. That is not what I expected. Uh, now we have the dagger. So this is the sun slice. It's a dagger. It looks pretty good. Then we have the moon slice, which it looks the same. There's little moons on it though, which I like. We have the legendary flicker of the crescent moon. Oh, look at that sickle. Oh my god. This is nasty. This is so cool looking. Oh my god, if only sickles weren't bad. Wow, that's super cool. Now have the inexplicably legendary garbage can lid. Oh, it's actually a straight up garbage can lid. Look at that. Look at this lid. Look at this garbage can. It re it's reflective. It's got like a little detail and dents on it. I don't know why the character's holding it without the handle. But, wow. Again, this item needs to get it gets changed because it only does a D8 damage. Um, and all of the shields in the game currently do 3D8s, or 3D10s plus base damage. So you can't use this as a vanguard, but it's a cool cosmetic. But don't use this shield. It's not good. It is a trap. It's worse than all the shields in the game that exist now. Um, now we have the... What's next? Thundershot. Woo! Look at this. It's cool. It's a crossbow. It's a repeating crossbow. It's kind of neat. Next, we have the Crystalline Ward shield. Hell yeah. 
That's what I'm talking about. Look how imposing the shield is. Look at the coloration. Oh my god, I love the coloration on this shield. This looks gorgeous. It's kind of like the Madstone shield, but it's really, really nice. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Uh, next, we're going through the Black Velvet Capelette. <laughs> it's a little cloak. I guess it's a Capelette. That makes sense. That's hilarious, that little cloak. Oh, that's kind of cool. We have the Kopesh, which is the Lunar Crescent. It's kind of hard to see. But it's got a really good curve. I really like the look of this weapon. This is super sick. Cloak of the City's Champion. Ooh, look at that. It's got a nice orange to it. Um, yeah, I like that. This is cool. It's a cool one. Yeah, this one's a proper Kopesh. This is a real Kopesh. Um, next, we got the Sun Crusher. Oh, the Sun Crusher. Look at this one. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. This is gorgeous. This is a bit of lag here, but oh, look at that. That is sweet. We have the boots. Next is the Creeping Dust Conduit, which is a quarterstaff. It's it's pretty nice looking. A um, little bland. Thought it would be a little bit more exciting based on the picture, but still still nice. Moon Guard. My hand goes right through it. So I don't think it's. I think I'm grabbing it wrong. But. Um, this is a nice looking shield. It's very, it's just, you know, it's muted. It's not just jumping out and screaming at you. But I don't think my hand is supposed to do that. It's a frisbee. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, the short sword. Oh my god, the short sword looks good. Guys, look at the short sword. Oh, jeez. Look at this. Ooh. Okay. I am a big fan of that short sword. This is fantastic. Let's see if the Five Storm Conduit looks any different. Okay, so the two conduits look the same. Don't cosmetic them. Next, we got the Rumbling Thunder, which is the same as the repeater, just doesn't have the repeater thing on the top of it. Really nice looking. Then we have the Moonbeam. Moonbeam is the same staff. Uh, then we have the Platinum Knuckles. You notice it de-equips my main hand weapon, but I don't have anything. That makes me sad. Uh, Nightshade cr Shooter. Again, same crossbow, just without the shit on top. And lastly, we have the Resplendent Fury Orb, which is the exact same rotating orb, but it is gold. Very, very cool. Kind of love that. I mean, the staff is nice. It's just there's three of the same staff. So overall, these weapons look absolutely astonishing. I kind of love it. Um, I don't know which is my favorite. I kind of like this shield. Holy moly, the shield is imposing. God damn, that looks good. Oh my god, these items look... Bysharn. Guys, Bysharn right now. Oh my god, look at these items. Holy shit. Okay. Ooh, you're also going to notice I'm not, um... I have no music on in this video. If you... If you're listening to nothing in the background. If you miss some of this and you want to catch up, I will be posting this whole thing on the YouTube. Okay, so next we have... We're going to look at the Crafted Weapons Suite. So, in this expansion, you get a Syrian weapon. It's just like the other shit. Um, I'm assuming they all look good, so we'll buy one of each and just quickly run through them. And we'll look at what the stats are on the Syrian items. I'm assuming the Syrian Scepter will have a different effect on it, but I don't know. Maybe there won't even be a Syrian Scepter. Who knows? Long. Quarter staff. Right here. There is a Scepter. Takes so long. All right, got it. Oh, cannot split. Uh oh. All right. So to look at the Syrian weapons, I'm gonna take a quick look. The so Syrian weapons—they are electrifying, holy, holy construct bane, and adamantine. Very, very cool. Um, so this is very, very neat. Uh, I really like this. It's better than it's it's situationally better. Um, the Morning Lords had silver. These have adamantine. The Morning Lords um had undead bane. These have constructs bane. So they're both kind of in the same vein. Um, one's for vampires, one's for constructs. I really like this. This one's fantastic. I, I, I like this one a lot, this item. Uh, same exact power level, so it just depends on which one it suits better. Now to the actual look of the items. Okay. Okay, there's a falchion. There's a falchion. Okay. Alright. Uh, yeah, it's a falchion. It's kind of good. Great axe. Oh, look at that great axe. Oh, 
Oh my god, look at the great axe. That's beautiful. Great club. Ooh. It's got kind of like a it's got a clubby clubby appearance going on. I'll move this over here. Nice clubby appearance. I like that. Oh my god, that's so big. Great sword. Woo! Oh, this great sword looks beautiful. Yeah, stab. Why am I doing a double down stab? That's weird. Man, that's good. Uh, battle axe. That's kind of cool. It's like the split great axe. Uh, Syrian mole. Oh, it's like a, it's like an anvil. Wow, that's good. That's so cool. Syrian dagger. It's like the, it's like the same as the little daggers. Uh, Syrian quarterstaff. The same as the other quarterstaff. So you don't have to try to farm out one of those since you just get a Syrian one for free. Syrian Dwarven Axe. So it's a miniature Great Axe, which is kind of cool. Apparently, yeah, Syrian Dwarven Axe. It's a miniature Great Axe. It's the, so the Great Axe is a big one, the Battle Axe is a half, and the Dwarven Axe is two. Syrian Morningstar. Got the lightning going through it. Uh, Syrian Hand Axe. Ooh, I like how it's like got that broken, jagged edge on it. It's very cool. I like that a lot. Um, Syrian Heavy Mace. Is there a difference between these two weapons, Morningstar and Heavy Mace? Oh, yeah, the Morningstar has the spikes on it. The Heavy Mace does not. I actually prefer the look of the Heavy Mace. Very cool. Syrian Heavy Pick. Oh, ooh, ooh, that's brutal. It's got the Light Pick built in. Because there's, there's the Light Pick and there's the Heavy Pick. That's cool. Syrian Comma. I hate commas, so if, you, if you're a comma person, you'll like this comma. Great Crossbow. Yep, it's, a, it's the same crossbow as the other one. Go fish. Woo! Look at that. Oh, baby. Look at that angle on that weapon. That's scary looking, man. That's scary. Uh, what is this? Heavy crossbow. Beautiful. Kukri! Ooh! Look at that Kukri! Oh, it's got that little hook on the end! Okay, this is a gorgeous weapon. I love this weapon. Man, I kind of want to cosmetic it. How do you hold this thing? Oh, man, that's scary. Light crossbow. Seen it. Light hammer. Eee! It's the it's mini one. It's the mini mall. That's kind of cool. I like that a lot. Uh, repeater. Hey, it's got that shit on top. It's got that box. Hold the ammo. Light mace. Hey, it's a mini mace. Doesn't have the dots either of the heavy mace. Light repeater. Same thing. Light pick. Oh, the heavy pick, it's actually different. The heavy pick has the extra bit here. Hmm, interesting. Longbow. Oh, it's in the wrong hand. Wait, my guy's left-handed? Wait. No, right-handed. Okay, never mind. You, you, you straight-arm the bow. That's that's kind of sweet. Uh, longsword. Oh, it's so, that's so good-looking. Oh, my God. I feel like I'm holding the master sword going on over here. Look at that. Look how nice this sword looks with that little, like, it's got the, the edges underneath here. Oh, it's so good looking. Short bow. Ooh. Again, the bows look very good. Although I think the short bow looks better. The short bow or the long bow? Yeah, the long bow is huge. Look at the difference in size of the bow. Like, that's huge. Rapier. Ooh. I like to just get that, like, little guard. Little sword guard. Very nice. Very thin blade. I'm not a rapier guy, but it looks pretty cool. I like the, the style of it. Uh, hand wraps. Uh, scepter. Looks like the scepter doesn't do anything different. So the scepter isn't special. But, ooh, it has a different look to it. It's like a chalice. It's like an energy chalice. That's kind of cool. I like that. Uh, scimitar. It's like a gun. Look at the handle on this thing. It's like a gun. You just hold it like a gun. That's hilarious. Oh, beautiful. Uh, short sword. It's not exactly the same as the long sword. It doesn't have the frit edges underneath. Kind of cool. Oh, man. I'm waiting for this one. Bastard sword. Bastard sword. Hold on. Bastard sword. Come out. Bastard sword. There it is. Oh, this is huge. This is a huge sword. Oh my god, I can't wait to throw some of my cosmetics on this. Beautiful. Sickle. Beautiful sickle. 
This is a really nice looking weapon. And Warhammer, as you can probably guess. Very, very cool. So those are some very cool weapons. Sell. At all. Goodbye. Sell my stuff. Get out of here. Stuff I don't need. Alright. And now we have... Uh, raid items. Raid items! Who wants to see the raid items? Oh, God. That would be like doing raids. Alright. Tower Shield, Lunar Eclipse, D12 plus 3. So you can tell right away, not a Vanguard Shield. Alignment Absorption. Whoa, this is insane! Evil damage is very hard to deal with, so this is cool. Quality Con 5, Insightful Magical Sheltering, and it's got Mirror Shield. Hey guys, guess what? You got a Tank Shield. This is a Tank Shield. Tank Shield right here, you got tanked. Tank Shield. Let's see how it looks. Constellation, the Cursed Blade, Great Sword. It's got... it's good damage, base damage. Uh, cursed Maelstrom. This weapon is racked with a dangerous and volatile curse. Striking an enemy has a chance to place a random debilitating and deadly curse on your bow. 10d6 on type damage and is nearly finished. Let's look at the raid item and see what you can do. So we have, this one is the uh, Great Sword Constellation. So you can add upgrade to add fetters of un unreality. So you can upgrade this to add um, vulnerability stacking and it applies a curse. I don't know what the curse does, but very cool. Fetters of the Forge Wraith. It's got Cursed Maelstrom as well, which causes the curse. Um, got the Fetters of Unreality, sort of adds additional damage on hit, Entropic, and it has Nearly Finished, which adds Constricting Nightmare, and Constricting Nightmare allows you to reduce Physical Resistance Rating by 10. So this item alone increases the damage that monsters take by you by 30%. This is a 30% damage boost over other items. This is the best hand wraps in the game. Hands down, you're done. Or Frost. Herald of the Bitter Ice. Uh, Dwarven War Axe. So right away, best Dwarven War Axe in the game. In the game, right here. It's got Freezing Ice, amazing. Chilling, useless. And Adamantine. Whew. And you can upgrade it, nearly finished, Dwarven War Axe, to get Fetters of Unreality. So it adds vulnerability stacking. Woo! Yep, we're going through all the loot right now. Impetus. Driven across stars. Repeating heavy crossbow. Summer of Vorpal, Fetters of Unreality. So everything's going to inflict vulnerability, I guess. Holy, and it's nearly finished. Driven across stars. Oh, imp Impetus. Um, Impetus does what? Where's heavy repeating crossbow? Why can't I find it? Um, Vorpal. No, it has Vorpal. It's all, this says this is supposed to do blunt dam ammunition, but it doesn't. Instead, it has Vorpal. I guess you upgrade to get blunt ammunition? I don't know. Impetus. Star Carver, Herald of Torment. Limb Chopper, Entropic, Metaline, and the nearly finished is vulnerability stacking. So, yeah. Broken Blade of the Constellation. Short Sword, Rage Short Sword. Entropic, so they all do Entropic. I think most of the weapons have the Cursed Maelstrom. Not all of them, but most of them. So whatever that does. And this one, uh, it adds vulnerability stacking. The Eclipse. It, uh, the Eclipse itself. Cool name. These weapons all have cool names. I like I like those, a lot of these. Um, the Eclipse itself. It is quality potency, spell lore, quality spell focus mastery, arcane augmentation is nearly finished. And this ability... Um, upgrades to pick an element just like Twilight from Caught in the Web. I don't know what that means, but sure. The Everstorm, Maelstrom Courser, Heavy Mace. Overwhelming Shockwave, a legendary weapon resonates with incredible power. On a Vorpal Strike that is converted to crit, releases Shockwave that does tremendous sonic damage. Furthermore, enemy that is Shockwave released on is dazed on the Force. Congratulations, you just became the best Heavy Mace in the game. And of course, it upgrades to add vulnerability. No, it upgrades to add Sovereign Disintegration. This actually doesn't add vulnerability. Weird. Fractured Elegance, Scimitar, Glass Shards, Spiked, Keen. Glass Shards is a very good effect. And the Fractured Curse is also... this. Also, Scimitar is piercing damage. Be aware of that. 
Piercing damage on this on the raid scimitar. Very cool. I didn't check the extra additional damage types. Anything else weird on here? Um, broken blade is piercing. The axe is slashing. Uh, Hoarfrost is slashing. Fetters of the Forge Wraith is not. Yeah, so it's just it's just this. But yeah, the the scimitar does in fact do piercing damage. Hollowed splinters. Oh, and the scimitar, I forgot. Um, upgrade to add Vorpal. Hollowed splinters, which is the heavy crossbow. Fire, holy silver. Wow. And the nearly finished for the heavy crossbow is sovereign disrupting. I don't know if this is good enough to use over the other crossbow, but it's interesting. A raid Kukri, labyrinthine edge. Identity crisis, adamantine keen. We've already seen Identity Crisis, and it's okay. It's not bad. Um, and this Kukri adds Vulnerability Stacking. Very good. Shattered Hilt of the Constellation. So the Constellation is the big greatsword here. This is the Shattered Hilt of the Constellation. It's Cursed Maelstrom, Entropic. It's a Bastard Sword. Um, and it's nearly finished is Vulnerability Stacking. And Untold, Crack in the Sky, a Battle Axe. So we got two axes. Very cool. Better than Reality, Electrical Storm. If you roll a... 20, you deal an AoE 15d6 electrical damage with a 39 DC. Someone needs to fix that. And nearly finished. Nearly finished. Ooh, battle axe. Armor piercing. Kind of cool. Now we have the rest of the raid loot. Citadel's Gaze. This is a part of the tank set. It has healer's bounty. Great. Command 11. Whoa. 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 That's crazy. Command 11? Wow. Intimidate 12, 22, and Insight 24. Very interesting. Crystalline Gauntlet. Um, this has 20 charges. I don't know of what. It says 20 charges. So I don't know what this does, but it's part of the Druid set. It gives quality potency. Oh, Spell Absorption. There it is. Does it recharge? Or is it just 20 charges? If it recharges, it's good. If it's just 20 charges, it's bad. <laughs> uh, magical Sheltering, Insightful Magic Sheltering, and Quality Potency. Very, very interesting item. Very, very potentially powerful. See if it fits. Hey, artifacts. So artifacts are a new thing that are coming out in this expansion. Artifacts um, are things that you that are like filigree, so you can fill them with filigree. So this is artifact XP. And when you equip an artifact, it basically gives you extra slots. So you could have two five sets now all of a sudden because you have access with um, eight on your weapon and three on your artifact. However, artifacts are also items, so you need to actually have them equipped. So this artifact, Gauntlet of the Iron Council, Constitution 22, Magical Sheltering, Spell Resistance, Acid Absorption, very, very good item. And then you can also slot filigree and has three augment slots. This item is crazy good. Helm of the Final Watcher. This is the head item for, uh, for the wall watch set, so the range set. Double shot, accuracy, range, lack area seeker. Seems kind of good. Molten Adamantine Gauntlets. Pierce Adamantine, insightful accuracy, double strike, and action boost enhancement. Seems pretty good. This item seems fairly good. Um, I think Molten Silvers might still be better situationally. It depends on if you need Insightful Accuracy or not. Next, we got the Piston Boots. This is Strength, 21. Fulcrum Shift. When you jump, you benefit from 5 melee power. So when you jump, you get melee power. Interesting. And Quality Combat Mastery and Stunning. Very good Stunning. I, I don't know how to evaluate this. You get melee power when you jump? I'm going to buy that. I'm going to put that on. Uh, silver Scale Capilet. Silver Dragon Scale Cloak. Look at it. You see that image right there? Oh, baby. Um, shining Silver Scales. Fashioned from Shining Silver Dragon Scales. Warded against cold. 51% cold absorption. Insightful Sheltering. Insightful Sheltering. That's really good. Dodge and nearly finished. What can you craft under this? Cloak. The Cloak. You can craft Insightful Strength, Dex, or Intelligence. Wow, that's so cool. Uh, it has a cooldown, according to the thing. Silver Dragon Scale Helmet. It's just universal, deadly, accuracy. 83 resist cold? Oh my god. And you can craft onto this helmet um, insightful dex, strength, or intelligence. Wow, very, very good. This is probably going to be your um, your helmet for most melees. Stagger Shockers. This is part of the Arc Steel Battle Mage. This is the raid item. Melee alacrity, lesser displacement, double strike, thund Storm Reaver's Thunderclap. Very, very good. Natural 20 deals a bunch of lightning damage. This is really powerful. Stagger Shockers. If you're using the Arc Steel set, you're probably using the Stagger Shockers. Cornerstone Champion. 
The pre reinforced fits. Wow, I'm being hosted with up to 65 viewers. Hey guys, we're doing item reviews. <laughs> so welcome. Um, reinforced, so this, the Cornerstone Champion, Melee Anarchy Deception, reinforced fits, and it's nearly finished. This belt allows you to do what? Quality, strength, dex, or wisdom. Very cool. That's a good item. The wide open sky. Hey, there's an extra item. A throwing dagger. The wide open sky. It does good, cold, uh, sorry, piercing, good, cold, iron, and magic. Holy coruscating. And, and the special effect on this item is upgrade aligned. So it adds evil, lawful, and chaos damage. Um, so still bad. Don't use this, but it's kind of neat. Attunement Gaze. Maybe it looks good. I have, I have to equip it. Attunement's Gaze. These are goggles for spellcasters. Esoteric influence set. Um, and it does improved metamagic heighten, improved metamagic bolden. Wow, that's kind of cool. Insightful spell focus mastery 4 and spell focus mastery 7. Very powerful. Highly recommend. The Band of Diane Ear One Yearn. Another artifact. This is a wrist artifact that gives intelligence, quality, spell focus mastery, quality potency, and light absorption. Very, very powerful artifact. You definitely want to consider using this on any type of like undead caster, as well as pretty much any intelligence build. It's very good. The brand of Kolaksash, which is, again, another artifact. Bracelet as well. Strength, quality, accuracy, quality, deadly. Oh, oh. Quality, accuracy, quality, deadly, and strength. Oh. And it's an artifact, so you can put filigrees in this. The Cracked Core. This is a necklace, and it gives Insightful Con 10, Quality Con 5, Soundproof, so you can't be affected by sound spells, and Alchemical Conservation, so you get extra key, more action boost, more turn on dead, and more bard songs. Would you use this? I don't know. It's very interesting. It's got a lot of good stats on it, but I don't know if I, if I would use it. Ethereal Gaze, another eye set. Ethereal, Displacement, Hide, Move Soundly, just a, just a good item. The Key of Rukandral, minor artifact. Another intelligence artifact. It's a necklace with insightful accuracy, deadly, and chaos absorption. Wow, that's so neat. This, by the way, I think that figuring out what the best items are going to be in this set is going to be nearly impossible, and it's going to be a ve take a very long time for people to figure out. So get ready to kind of think about what artifacts you're going to want to use. This is not going to be an easy task. The Radiant Ring of Tear Valestas. I really like that all these little things have custom art. The key, the, the ring, it's got that custom art. It's super cool. Wisdom, de quality, accuracy, quality, deadly, law absorption. Very cool. Sigil of Regalport, another artifact. Charisma, this is a necklace. Quality, spell, focus, mastery. Wizardry 481. Whoa, this is a good item. Sigil of the Triumvirate, another artifact that gives dexterity, and insightful accuracy, deadly, and sonic absorption. This is a ring, actually. It's another ring. And the Stolen Signet of Irwinirn. Which gives is another ring, charisma, exceptional luring skills bonus, quality potency forty one, electric absorption, and some other crap. Then we have the tattered scrolls of the broken one. These apparently are wrists, and these wrists say, "Hey, you can turn undead now." So turn undead wrists plus magical sheltering and insightful sheltering. Pretty good item. Also part of the flame cleanse fury. This is a really good item. Don't let me like talk you down. If you're playing cleric, it's not bad. Um, family's blessing, quality assassinate. Insightful Armor Piercing, Deadly, and Deception. Hard to say. It's got Insightful Armor Piercing, but the necklace seems like it's a pretty competitive spot in, in this uh, expansion. So. Then we have the Zerat, Zerashak Ward. Wisdom, Quality Spell Focus Mastery, Quality Potency, Negative Energy Absorption. Oh, cool. Another artifact. Necklace. It's a Wisdom Necklace artifact. We have the Wildwood Wrists, um, which is Insightful Double Shot 7, Insightful Deception 9, Quality Deception. Look at all the Deception, man. This is plus 13 to hit and plus 19 to damage. Very powerful. Insightful Double Shot. Th this, these bracers are actually kind of insane. And on the bracers, you can craft Insightful Intelligence decks or Wisdom. So that's kind of cool. And then we have the last artifact, the Ear Kesslin's Shattered Lens. Dexterity, Dodge 22, Parrying 10, Fire, Force Absorption. Force Absorption? Whoa. Oh, that's so good. And they're goggles, and you don't use goggles in the tank set. That's kind of cool. All right, let's take a look at all these raid items and see what we got going on. Take a look at some of the stuff. So first item we are showcasing is... Constellation, the Cursed Blade. <laughs> look at this sword! Look at this sword! Are you serious? This is amazing. Wow, that's cool looking. 
After Constellation, we have the Shattered Hilt of Constellation. Which is... Oh, the Bastard Sword's like the Broken Sword! Oh, that's so cool! So it's a Broken Great Sword. Oh, man. This is gorgeous. Then we have the Eclipse itself. Which is this. I think this is already in the game. Very, very, very insanely cool quarterstaff, though. I kind of love it. So, I... If you, I definitely want to get this as a cosmetic. Next we have, uh, what is this? The Broken Blade. Oh, wait. Oh, the Shattered Hilt and the Broken Blade. Oh, this is the other half of the Broken Sword. Yo, check it out. I have both pieces. That's kind of cool. I like that it actually looks like the swords. Isn't that awesome? Oh, my gosh. Very cool. Dwarven War Axe. Looks just like the uh, the regular one, so it's not really different. Fetters of the Forge Wraith, can't see. New crossbow, looks like the regular one. New Kukri. Um, let's click off this Kukri. It's got, like, scratches on the front. It's got, like, crazy runes and stuff. This is a cool-looking Kukri. Not better than the other one, but it's very cool-looking. Uh, Scimitar. It's got just some more detail and design. Different metal color choices, so very cool. Uh, then we have the Battle Axe. It's exactly the same as the ba other Battle Axe. So with the effect. Everstorm, the Maelstrom. Again, it actually just doesn't have the effect on it, which is kind of weird. The Cloak. Oh, Dragon Cloak. That's a cool look. That's a beautiful looking cloak. I like that a lot. Star Carver, Herald of Torment. Oh! <laughs> look at the effect on this weapon. Look, look at it! Look at it! Where is it? This! Look at this! Look at this! Oh ho! And it leaves sparkles! Look at the sparkles it leaves behind! This is what I wanted Black Razor to look like. I wanted Black Razor to do this. This is the coolest. Holy crap. Then we have the Lunar Eclipse Shield. Look at the size of this thing! Wow, that is a big honking shield. And then we have crossbow. Neat! That's kind of cool. I really like that. So how exciting is that, everybody? Look at all those items. And there's one more thing to look at with the with regards to the items. Um, I'm going to put on this great axe because, wow, this is the coolest looking thing in the world. I don't even know if this item is good or not, but it is so very cool. Oh my god, look at this thing. Anyway, last thing we're going to look at is filigree, because there are actually new filigree. So let's look at what that stuff is, shall we? Oh, show me the filigree. Oh, there's so much stuff. C crafting stuff, crafting table, crafting table, barter box. Okay, filigree. Show me the filigree. Oh my god, there's three filigree shops. A lot of filigree, apparently. All right. So first, the first filigree set is the Coalesced Arcane. The Coalesced Arcane set is a five-piece set that gives universal spell power, 4% spell crit damage. That's really good. Castle level with arcane spells, terrible. And 30 universal spell power. So it's just straight up damage on this set. Uh, yes, this expansion is bigger than Raveloft. It features more quests, more items. It has a it has a town space. Um, and it has like advent, like different adventure areas and stuff. So it's a, it is a bigger expansion. Um, this... Alcoholist Magic features Arcane Spell Failure, Charisma, Intelligence, Magical Resistance Rating, um, Spell Crit Damage. Wow, Spell Crit Damage? That's so cool. Universal Spell Power and, and Wisdom. The next filigree set we're going to look at is Sanctified Fervor. Oh, this is so dirty. This is so dirty. Okay, so check this out. Um, Sanctified Fervor is the new filigree set. It's Plus 5 healing amp for 2, 5 melee power and range power for 3, 2% double strike and double shot for 4, and 5 pieces equipped. When you activate Smite Evil, or Greater or Slash Improves the Smite Evil, or Consecrated Ground, gain Martial Grandeur. 75 melee power and 25 range power. You know what Martial Grandeur is? I think you guys know what Martial Grandeur is. Wait a second. That's even better than Prowess. Is that better than Prowess? Wait a second. Is this better than Prowess? Oh, Martial Granger can only be applied once per minute. 
So it has a bigger effect and a longer effect, but a longer cooldown. And so it has a lower uptime. Wow. Um, this gives charisma, melee power, strength, wisdom. Oh, charisma, melee power, strength, and wisdom are the four filigrees. I thought there would be more, but apparently those are the four. Wait, there's four filigrees, but there's five. Weird. Then we have the Shattered Device. The Shattered Device is a set that does plus three to attack and damage for two piece. Wow, that's crazy. 3% double strike for the three piece. Melee and ranged attacks have a chance to reduce enemy PR and MRR by 10. And melee and ranged attacks have a chance to reduce enemy P melee power and range power by 10. Wow, oh, that's so good. Holy smokes. It comes with armor piercing, which is amazing. Attack and damage, magical resistance rating, melee power, physical resistance rating, range power, and strength. Very cool. Next we have the Soul Weaver. Positive spell power, caster level with positive spells, five plus two to all saving throws, and 5% positive spell crit. Kind of cool. Very good. It comes with charisma, constitution, it's positive spell crit. Oh, it's 2%. Kind of cool. Uh, positive spell power, spell points, spell points and a filigree? Wow, that's nice. Universal spell power and wisdom. Interesting. So, oh, very cool. Filigree. Let's go to the filigree set number two. Hopefully there's more Sanctified Fervor somewhere, or else you can't actually use Sanctified Fervor, which is funny. Yeah, there's more Sanctified Fervor. All right, next there's Crackshot Negotiator. Crackshot Negotiator. It is a very... It's a four-piece set, so it's not a five-piece. Ten Diplomacy, 15 range power, and three... Or 5% double shot. 15 range power for a three set? That's amazing. And it's got ten Diplomacy. Incoming Inquisitives. Attack and damage. Diplomacy, rare. Uh, diplomacy gives five. So you can get... 15 Diplomacy from just this. How cool is that? Then you got Range Power. Um, yeah, Range Power and Reflex Saves. Very cool. After that, you got Dark Hallow. Dark Hallow. Dark Hallow is negative Healing Amp, negative Universal Spell Power, or you, no, negative Healing Amp, Universal Spell Power. I don't know why I said negative. And then your weapon attacks heal you for a d6 negative damage on hit. This damage scales with negative spell power, 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 power. Which means you can be a literal vampire now. You can be a melee and a pale master and heal yourself super fast. If you have a thousand spell power, this thing is going to be healing you for 11 to 66 every attack. Dark Hollow contains... Constitution, Intelligence, Light Absorption, Negative Amplification, Amplification, and Negative Healing Spell Power. The rest of Sanctified Fervor, by the way, you got Healing Amp, you got Physical Resistance Rating, and you got Smite Evils. So you get extra Smite Evils. Then you have the Shards of Mechanis. Um, Shards of Mechanis, 20 Repair Amp, 10 Physical Resistance Rating, and your weapon attacks heal you for a D6 Repair Hit Damage. Or repair damage on hit. This scales with repair spell power, power, power. So if you play a Warforged, you can just slap this shit in and do whatever you want. How cool is that? It's very cool. That answers your question. It's very cool. So, bleh. this is an amazing, and it's a four piece, so it's super easy to get. You can get it on pretty much any Warforged character. Very, very neat. Um, it comes with Constitution, Fortification, Intelligence. Magic resistance rating, repair amplification, repair spell power. Kind of cool. Now we have Through the Mists. Um, Through the Mists comes with true seeing for the two-piece, dodge and max dodge, range power, and when you use uncanny dodge, you gain 50 range power for 15 seconds. So, range power, you know, pretty hard to come by. Using uncanny dodge, you gain 50 range power. It's kind of good. Definitely, definitely want to use something like that. So this is very powerful. Um... It's kind of cool because you have to trade off. You're saying, I'm using my Uncanny Dodge, which is my defensive effect, and you're using that to gain an offensive bonus. You don't always have it. So you have to choose when you want to use this. It's a very interesting ability. It gives you Armor Piercing, Attack and Damage, Dexterity, Dodge, Magical Resistance Rating, Physical Resistance Rating, and Ranged Power. Neat. And last one. Last Filigree Shop. So there's Crackshot Negotiator, apparently also has Charisma. Then you have the final burial. I bet you you better believe what this is. A hey, turn undead. Which means either if you're playing cleric, you need this, or you don't. Either your turning's not good enough, so you have to use this, or your, your turning can't be good enough, so it doesn't matter even if you use it or not. Constitution, charisma, turn undead charges, turn undead hit dice, turn undead maximum hit dice. That's just stupid. That's dumb. And wisdom. And then next fall, attack and damage. 
Um, so next fall has plus two to attack and damage, plus five melee power, and you gain plus five to attack and damage versus trip targets. That's neat. So if you just trip people, check it out. If you have attack and damage right here, which is plus one to attack and damage, plus two to attack and damage, and plus five to attack and damage, you get plus eight to damage. As long as you're tripping people. So cool. Attack and damage, dexterity, melee power, reflex, trip. How much does trip does this do? Plus one trip. Wisdom. Then we've got reverberation. Reverberation is, adds um, sonic spell damage on hits. Um, so it's the 13d6 sonic spell damage. Sonic spell power and sonic crit damage. I don't know if it's good. Probably bad. Because um, spellcaster bards are bad. But anyway. Reverberation gives you... You've got Charisma, Physical Resistance Rating, Reflex Saves, Sonic Absorption, Sonic Spell Power, Universal Spell Power. Cool. And then I think... Is there more? No, I think that's it. Splendid Cacophony. Sp Splendid Cacophony is Double Strike for 2 set, 20 Spell Power for the 3 set, and the 4 set is your Inspire Courage gets additional Attack Damage and Saves versus Fear, and additional 3 Spell Power. If you're playing a Buff Bard, you probably want to use this 4 set. So, there we go! Congratulations, everybody. That's all the things. That is all of the things.